Hi guys and welcome to another Elementor video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Well we had an interesting question. We've been doing some of these Elementor text to image hover effects. We've got a couple of images at the top here. When I hover over, some text is going to appear. And we had a good question on one of them. They wanted this to happen but when they scroll up and down the page, they want a fixed image in the background there, so it scrolls up and down with it. Really easy to do. If you look at that middle image when I scroll up and down the page, you can see it's staying in the place. It's got a fixed background. One on the left is just a regular image. Really easy to do, so let's get started. I'm going to hit the Edit with Elementor. OK, well, let's go down and I'll create a brand new section. I'm using the pro version of Elementor today, but this will work just as well with the free version. In my version, I'm going to write the code on this page. If you're using the free version, same exact code, go to your dashboard, go down to appearance and then customize. That'll take you to this page here. Hit the additional CSS panel and you can write any code in here. And don't forget any code I write I'll put down below the video today. So let's get started. I'm going to add a new section. We'll start from scratch. Little blue tab for a new section. I'm going to make mine three columns because that's what we were using above. Here we are. And of course I want to put some text or something in there. And this will work for any module you like because we're going to make it disappear. I'm going to put a simple text module in there. I won't spend too much styling it. Let's pop that text in the middle. I'm going to make it light in color. It will disappear into the page there. But I'm going to give our text module a background color. So if we go over to advanced, here we've got background just down here. And let's just choose a color for it. Let's make it similar blue as we did that for that other one there. Great. Well, let's give it a bit of padding. So it's not all squashed up like that. Still in the advanced at the top at the layout. I'm going to uncheck the little chain here because if you leave that checked, it'll do all four at once for you. I'm going to give it, say, 60 on the top, 30 on the side, 60 on the bottom, and another 30 on the side. Basically, all we're doing here is getting it the shape that you want it to display the image down below. Okay. So there we've got it. Now the way that these hover effects work is that the image that you see initially is residing in the column and it's a dark tab for a column, a little light blue tab for the module. So if we go into the column itself, you may notice we've got a little bit of gap between the top of the column and the actual module itself or widget itself. We want to take that away and replace it with margin. So when we put an image behind it, the image takes up the same real estate as the widget and we won't see any spill out. To do that in your column, go over to the advanced. Make sure there's no padding. This time I'm going to leave that chain checked so it does all four at once. Take away all that padding and let's give it about 10 pixels margin all around. Again, I'm leaving the chain checked there. Great. Well, now we can go to the style and add an image. I'm just going to go down to background type here, hit the little paintbrush. Here we can add an image. This will work better with a sort of tall type image. Uh, let's grab that same one as I used before. And I'll pop it in there. Now you can't see it because obviously it's behind our little module here. Now the settings that we want for this today, I'll actually make this disappear and then I'll show you. So let's go back into our little module here, the blue tab. And this is where the bit of coding comes in. I'm going to give this a CSS class so we can target it with some custom code. So once in your module, go to your advanced. If we look down here under the layout tab, we got CSS ID and classes. I'm going to give it a class and I'm going to say T for text, I for image and SC for scroll. You can call yours what you want, but it wants to be unique. I tend to do mine that they're going to mean something to me. So if I see them in the expected code, I can figure out what it is. So I'm calling that TISC, which is my kind of shorthand for text image scroll. Now I'm going to roll down, because I've got the pro version, to the custom CSS at the bottom here. If you're using the free version, 
it'll tell you to buy the Pro here. But what you need to do is go to your custom CSS panel over here and you can write your code in here. It'll do exactly the same thing. Okay, so let's go down here. We gave ours a class of TISC. It's a CSS class. All CSS classes have a dot or a period in front. So it's dot TISC. Then we can open and close some curly brackets. And in between, we can write the code that we want to target it with. Now I want it to disappear. So I'm going to say opacity, which is transparency or see-throughness if you like, zero, which is invisible. And there we are. That's actually the corner of this little picture that we've got up there. I just wanted to get that out of the way so you could see what was going on. Okay, and then when we hover over it, I want to bring that text module back. So I'm going to copy this whole thing. And don't forget, this code will be down below the video for anybody who wants to copy and paste it. I'm going to hit Control C. I'm going to drop down. And after our class name, TISC, on this second one, I'm going to put a colon, no space after the C, and no space after the colon and the word hover. That will let us create a hover state. I'm going to bring that opacity back to 1, which is fully visible. And with opacity, you can increment up 0 0.1, 0 0.2 for different transparencies. If I hover over it now, you'll see that's jumping back in. I like mine to kind of fade in for a bit of drama there. So I'm going to add a bit of transition duration in the regular state above. I'm going to say transition. And it's prompted us down below. There it is, transition duration. I'm going to make mine take about a half a second to fade in, which will be 0.5s, semicolon. Now when I hover over it, it's a little more gradual. Great, for the, so there's our little hover effect taken care of. But I can't really see any of that image. So we need to go back into our column, a little dark tab here. We'll go to that image. Position, I'm going to leave at the default. Attachment is the important bit. If we want it to scroll up and down, we need to set it to fixed. That way, it's going to stay where it is. But that kind of makes that image huge there, which will work, which is fine if you've got a reasonable resolution image there. But I want mine to contain it in there, so it's a little smaller, but we still get that effect. So I'm going to go down a bit more to size here, and I'm going to hit contain. That sort of contains it within that column a bit better, and we can see a lot more of it. And that's all there is to it, really. If we just save this and take a look at our page, roll on down to where we were working, there's that image again. As you can see, it's scrolling up and down the page. So there you go, guys. There's how to create a text over image on Hover with a scrolling background. So I hope that's answered that question. I hope you found this useful today and enjoyed it. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie with System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.